Hi and welcome to my channel. In this series, One Sheet Wonder Wednesdays, we will be taking a look at how to take one cut apart sheet to make and embellish a scrapbook layout. Hi everybody and welcome. It's Wednesday today and uh, this is the first in my new series called One Sheet Wonder Wednesdays. It's quite a long title but um, uh, I'm sure it'll grow on all of you. As explained in the um, title of my video, this series I'm using one cut apart sheet to make and embellish a scrapbook page. And the inspiration for this actually came at the end of last year. I had one sheet of the Carabella Flora number no. one just one of their cut apart sheets and I loved it and I wanted to make a layout with it but I didn't have any of the embellishments or any of the other papers and I just started playing around with my gelatos and um, started cutting up this cut apart sheet and hacking it to pieces and I made a layout with it so I thought why not do a series on how to stretch a cut apart sheet and so this is the first one in the series and I'm going to be using the doodle bug under the sea collection it's the girl collection and here you see I've already cut apart the sheet so next I'll be adding the gesso to my page as you will see I am scraping it on with um, an old photo or an old a piece of an old photo that I um, cut apart and I'm going to be scraping it on um, very gingerly with uh, in in the same direction I am planning on doing my um, paint um, paint stripes with so I took this card in the sheet um, as my main inspiration for the colors I want to use oh, that's my cat <laughs> she's joining us for the voiceover and this first color I'm going to use is called guava. It's um, it's a gelato. It's a very light, sort of coral colored gelato. And the brush I'm using is a very cheap IKEA brush. However, it is the perfect width for what I'm going to be doing today, and it's very soft. So it you won't see a lot of. Um, texture in the paint strokes other than the textures on the edges of the strokes and that's exactly what I was planning on and, and, and going for. So this next color is called bubblegum. It's a bit of a brighter color and um, yeah it it's a gorgeous color. This next uh, orange color it's a very vibrant color it's it's called mango and you'll see as I'm adding the water it's very vibrant it's got a luminosity to it and it's very bright it's a lot brighter than the pinks I've used and you'll see that the yellow and the green they're also as bright as the um, mango orange this yellow I'm using is called lemon and you'll see that it's, it's lovely, bright yellow color. This green is a twinkling, um, an H2O twinklings. I'm not even sure how to say it. Um, but yes, it's called Kiwi. And it's also really bright. It, this one has got a shimmer to it. Not that much that it clashes with the gelatos, but it is, um, you'll see, it's got a little shimmer to it, but it's beautiful. So I'm just adding some more to make it a bit brighter and to just give it a bit more consistency. I'm going to come in with my heat tool as I'm impatient and I want to get this done. I'm very excited about this and um, the colors are really beautiful and vibrant. So I decided that the two pinks at the top, the guava and the bubblegum pink they are not bright and vibrant enough so I'm just going to be adding some more gelato straight onto onto the color I'm going to take my paintbrush and just wet it a little bit and rub or paint it just 
over that color. And you'll see it, it, it ends up a lot brighter. Now I do realize that this guava um, gelato is not going to be more vibrant. It'll probably just get a little darker, but that's fine. I didn't have another lighter pink, so I'm just making it darker. And I'm going to come in with my heat tool again to just to speed up the heating process. Off camera, I do heat it on the back a bit so that um, I minimize the warping of my page. I don't mind warping of the page, but you know, it, it does get hectic sometimes. So off camera, I did some stitching in a square. I did some zigzag stitching and wonky stitching. And something I've been doing lately is I leave the threads off the of the edges of the stitching I don't cut them off and it adds texture and a little bit of whimsy and I just plain like it I'm not sure how many times I stitched around that square probably about 10 times and it adds a thickness and it adds a layer and it adds texture and 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 I really like it you'll see that in this process of making this layout with the cut, one cut apart sheet I do gut some of these um, some of these cards well all of them actually and this is to stretch your your cut apart sheet if you are going to just layer all of those cards behind your photos you're going to lose all the beautiful graphics in the center of the of the little cut apart so You'll see here in the fussy cutting of this little mermaid in her curls in her hair, they are really tiny curls. And I'm basically just holding my right hand still with the scissors and I'm moving the, the paper around the scissors. And this allows me to get into those little bits, the tricky little bits. The photo that I'm using is a very colorful, vibrant photo as well. I did edit it somewhat. I upped the saturation and I um, uh, upped the contrast as well. Now usually in a bright layout like this where there's a lot of color and the I choose to use a black and white photo so that the colors in the photo won't clash with the colors on the layout. However, I managed to find a photo with similar with a similar color scheme. And it just adds to the vibrancy of this whole layout, to the fun, bright feel of this, of this layout. You'll notice that I am layering. The first two layers behind the, the photo are uh, more color on color. It's, um, they are less patterned than the last two layers. And I'll tell you a little bit about that later. And there you'll see I'm gutting that card as I probably will be using or that I know that I will be using um, some of that insides there a bit later. And I'm gutting this card as well. Just building my layers, building some interest behind the photo. I decide to put some vellum behind that photo. Um, as you've noticed, I'm, I'm doing that a lot lately. So um, you'll be, and, and I probably will be doing this <laughs> a lot more in the layouts to come. So, yes. Okay, so here I'm stacking all my layers together. And as I've said, I'm using the um, sort of solid patterns, more color on color, um, less busy patterns as the first couple of layers on um, behind my photo. And I will be using those more vibrant, uh, busy patterns like that one, for instance, closer to the end. Here I am going to be cutting that little poem, all the little sentences into strips. And I will be building a little embellishment with them just to the right of to the right top hand corner of that photo. And there you'll see, 
I'm sticking that very colorful busy pattern right on top of the of the um, paint strips that I painted over there. It creates a border between the more flat colored paint strips and the um, less busy flat colored um, cards that I layered there behind the photo. I decided I'm going to cut out those little splatters above the mermaid's head and the little waves so that I can layer them or place them above and below the mermaid so that it looks like she's jumping out of the water and having a great old time. The title of this page will be Splish Splash, so the mermaid is splishing and splashing out of the water. I'm going to fussy cut that. I'm not going to show you how to do that or <laughs> that I'm doing it. It takes a bit of time and it's boring to watch. I'm going to lightly adhere the splish and the splash to my page. I'm going to be sewing through it in a little bit to add some more texture and just to make sure that that title doesn't go anywhere. I'm going to be just adhering that lightly as well to the, to the page. I'm going to be stitching through that as well. So here I am adding the the busier patterns behind my layering and you'll see that it creates a nice border between the two bolder flatter um, layers I've got going there. It adds some white as well which brings in the white of the well which ties in with the white of the little poem strips I've got there to the right hand side of the photo. I do add another layer of vellum behind the uh, photo layering I have going on there just to give that a little bit more pop and there you go off camera I've stitched through the splish and the splash and through that little poem there ocean waves sandy toes summer sun upon your nose and unfortunately, I didn't record this next bit. I added some Heidi Swap Color Shine, the gold color shine, and some sequins from my stash. And this is basically the layout. Uh, I had a lot of fun making this. The vibrant colors and painting the strips on there. I really enjoyed making this. This was such a fun layout to make. And it was so easy because I was limited to one cut apart sheet. I wasn't overwhelmed with an entire collection with a million embellishments. And um, yeah. So if you like what you see, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.